Hi everyone, welcome to Newcastle Fans TV. Special guests all over from New York. Sean, how are you doing, mate? You all right? I'm Sam, mate. How are you doing? Not bad. Sean's actually my, my mate, actually. Um, many a times I've been out partying. We'll uh, keep them quiet, though, Sean, them, them stories. So, um, I've got you on. Basically, just have a chat about the tune, all things tune, from like Bournemouth and the games coming up and so on, the tune situation. But um, let's go back to the weekend and uh, the result against Bournemouth. 2-0 up. And then we're, we lose two points, don't we? What happens? Huge two points drop. Huge, mate. I was talking that um, some coaches prior to it were talking about with Bournemouth, they concede a lot and score a lot. Well, there's a cat. You have to, I know, mate, yeah. Uh, you can really. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, have to, you have to find a balance with Bournemouth. Uh, like I said, the, the score goals and concede goals. In the first half, I thought we'd done it brilliantly. Like, we found the balance to get those two goals past them that they do concede and not have them concede. Brilliant. Get yourselves in half time. Came out the second half. I thought we're a little bit sloppy. Obviously we had the Perez chance that could have went 3-0. I know he's under pressure, but he's six yards out. He's got to be finishing that or at least getting it under the ball. Then it's game set match all over. What about the Shelby one? I mean the Shelby one, yeah. He's got to be burying it. <laughs> exactly the same thing. He's got to be burying it. We could have been four. However, we've ruined those chances. So now we have to defend as a team. And the last 10 minutes is shambolic defending. The first one. Yeah. Uh, to pick up the ball, you know, we, we missed the first. The, you know, we don't care in the first chance. We don't care in the second chance. And Shelby's walking back to defend. You see you it. Have to, you have to defend with your life. 10 minutes left. Three points could have got us in the top ten. However, Shelby, they pick it up the edge of the box. Nobody closes them down, and Shelby just walks straight back. Then on this, you know, it's a great goal. I think the keeper could have done a little bit better. I was straight at him, you know, swerving whatever. The second goal, Shelby tries that a little bit more. He gets nutmegged, but again, we miss the first ball. We miss the second ball. We miss the third ball. We just don't clear our lines and. Consequently, two points dropped. Absolutely raging. Remote went off the TV. Wow, you're like, doing to me. The defender made shambolic. Like, you're down the bottom of the table. We are the biggest club in that relegation fight. And you have to, you've got to be defending so, well enough. So, who do you blame then? Do you blame Rafa for the subs? Because a lot of people in the comments box over the videos of the weekend were blaming Rafa. Um, Obviously, Dwight Gale went off with a slight tight hamstring and he doesn't bring Hostler on to try and, for me, being 2 0 up, that he's perfect, is ideal just to hold the ball up, bring a midfielder into play. But he brought on a midfielder and then Jacob Murphy, bless him, it was his birthday. He wasn't even the match day 18. So Matt Ritchie comes off and he brings on Javier Mankiw at right midfield. For me, I defend Rafa to the gods, I always do, but I thought those two substitutions, I know Hayden come on later, but I thought those two substitutions were wrong. Rafa's a tactical genius. I mean, the guy's a, you know, he's been at the top clubs, you know, Milan, Madrid, Liverpool, with Champions League. You know, you trust him with your heart. He's the best manager that we could have. I'm never, ever going to criticise him. Apart, the only time I ever criticised him was when he went 4 4 2. Could never understand that, going like that with us. But, you know, we had to find that balance. We did. Apart from that 10 minutes, and you can't blame Rafa for those 10 minutes, you have to pin where was the desire from those players to defend? I think the, our best defender was the keeper at, that, really? at one stage. I, I generally thought it was our, you know, that save that he'd done where you know, he knocked himself out. Um, but, nah, I, I blame the players. Shelby for the first one. The second one, I blame just the defence, mate. Like I said, the ball goes wide, I think, twice. And we just miss. We just, you know, we don't clear the first one, don't clear the second one. And you, you, you're saying to yourself, it's coming, it's coming. And then Dan Gosling out of everyone, who's marking him? Exactly, who's who's marking him? I mean, the June's got to four, so he's the only one who you can't really blame. There are several of people there here, and even Jamal Ascells is a bit, you know, and he's been absolutely uh, world-class this season for us. So there is defensive mistakes there. And you look at that, obviously, the league table, it's so, so tight down there. I think it's only two points that way above the relegation line. Anywhere from 10th, to go down. Do you think we've got enough to stay up? I think we'll stay up. I think the next the next two home games are, are crucial. Southampton, 
this weekend. Next sorry, weekend. Next weekend, yeah. We've got Liverpool uh, away this weekend. You're not expecting that from there, are you? I, I would, of course, I'd snap your hands off for a draw. If someone says, do you want to draw against Liverpool away? Yeah, sound. But then you have to look at Liverpool. You're going to catch them on either two days. One day, you're going to catch them in Salah, Mane, Firmino. They're going to be unstoppable. Sing it. Are you going to sing it? They'll, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love Mane, Mane, dude. I love it. But if you catch Liverpool on that day, they will outplay and rinse anyone. Yeah. However, over weeks, you've seen Liverpool concede goals and draw and lose stupid games. The Swansea game is a massive standout. You know, if we can catch Liverpool on a day where a team can go to Anfield and win, hopefully, because like I say, over the last sort of season or two, they have had stupid performances where they've lost games at home. And hopefully we can catch them on one of those days and, you know, grind out three points if we can. The, the likes of the Manchester United game, hopefully they can look at that game and try and put the same performance in. Or we're going to catch them where them three are just going to outplay us. We just right. don't defend... The outplay us. But I just don't want to look that as a bonus game, as you say. I don't want to look at it as that. Yeah, because we well, Rafa was saying every, every game is a cup final game now. We've got a point at home um, and I was over your neck of the Well, I say your neck of the woods. It's down in Miami um, and when we drew 1 1. So there is hope there, isn't there? There's huge. I think I think we'll stay up. I think Lascelles come out and said, you know, with the confidence flowing, you know, we've got Rafa Benitez as manager. I believe we can stay up, but. Just stupid mistakes like Bournemouth. We have to cut out. We have to cut out now because the teams below us and in and around us, this is where you see the fighters, mate. This is where you see the teams come out and defend for their lives. Every game's a cup final. And I don't want Newcastle to be that team that just don't come out with that attitude. And it has to start at Liverpool this week. So let's just say we get beat off Liverpool because that's what we're expecting, aren't we? Anything else than that, it's a bonus. Then you're talking about the big one, which is Southampton. That is massive. That's the big one in the six-pointer. We're next two. We're next two home games are huge, mate. We're next two home games are huge. Got to win them. But, well, we have Tottenham in between, and what are we going to get out of Tottenham? But our next home game is huge, mate. Southampton at home, below us on the table, not picking up results. We're right could, home. Well, they could be above us by after the time we play Liverpool. Well, they could be, yeah, but that it's that is, tight. That it, it's more than six points, mate. It's it's Premier League or, or Championship. In my yeah. opinion, because if we lose Southampton, other teams are going to get the run on us. We're not going. We need to hit the ground running now, mate. Otherwise, I believe in the squad that we have, but our home games are going to. I think we have ten games left and five at home. It has to be ten points or above. It's got to be. Can it be anything less than ten? Slamani, uh, you know, he came in. Now some fans are actually criticising Rafa Benitez for signing a Michael Owen. I don't think he's got the ability to make it own mind but I can get what they mean is that they're bringing in a striker who was injured and he's obviously had another setback I think that's a bit harsh criticism because he had to bring someone in didn't he but then I again Mitrovic has got the championship and scoring goals for Fulham yeah mate it just shows you didn't it I, I, was, a, I was a fan of uh, Mitrovic I wish he got more game time I think he's a player that could bully defenders he's a striker that you know they didn't want to come up against um, I wish he got more game time under Rafa. Unfortunately, he didn't. Um, but how much does Rafa have influence on you know transfers? Yeah, he brought in Slamani. Was it all Rafa that wanted to do it, or was it a Lee Charlie thing? You know, he does not get. Surely, it's got, surely it would be Rafa thing because we've gone through all that before. And McLaren, hadn't he? Um, I don't think Slamani was first choice, mind you, because Jorgensen was, wasn't it? Yeah, Jorgensen was. Unfortunately, he didn't come, and then he scored on the day he was supposed to come, or something like that. I read. <laughs> um, which is typical. We did, yeah, because we were doing fan cams outside, yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, he got a he had a huge price tag going to Leicester. He scored some vital goals for Leicester. Yeah, he's had his injuries, but just see how hungry he is. You know, he's want he's going to want to prove himself to all the Leicester fans. He's going to want to prove himself. Um, it depends how hungry he is. You know, some of the interviews I've read about him and watched, he's he's dying to get in. He's dying to be involved. Which for me, if you're dying to be involved, brilliant. You know, throw him in. Last thing I want to be hearing is arm oh, injured, blah blah blah. As long as he's hungry, and he's, oh my God, I was criticizing Gail left, right, and center until the weekend. <laughs> but Gail, Gail and Hossley, mate, where are the goals in there? 
There's, well, there's to, not... be fair, to be fair to Dwight Gale, like, against Man United, he worked really hard, stretched the defence, should have had a penalty, grabbed an assist, and then he bangs, I know the tap-ins, but you've got to be there to have the tap-ins. So I think he's our best striker at the minute, and you've got to play. Oh, 100% him. he's our best striker. Hosselu, oh my, I can't stand Hosselu. <laughs> Hosselu, for me, is... I have, I am on Instagram, and he, he does a poor game. The next day, he's on Instagram, thumbs up in training. I'm like, mate, this has to be on the pitch. Never mind in training. Like, start smashing them in. But whether that's a Rafa thing with him, every time I watch him, he drifts out to flanks to hold the ball up, and he relies heavily on midfielders to join and then come up and play. Surely that's a got that's got to be a Rafa thing, that hasn't it? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I think it is a Rafa thing. But sometimes. Sometimes you have to go against what your manager says in certain scenarios. And I think if he wants to drift centrally to try and link up play, he's going to get more goals that way. But again, I think, but I think that's what Soleimani, because Soleimani can offer you a little bit more when he can actually turn, whereas Hustler can it. And then obviously Soleimani's, I think Soleimani's better in the air as well. Yeah, I, just, I think Hustler for me is... Uh, I, I did, before last week, I looked at our strike force and I went, where are the goals keep, going to keep us up? Where are they going to come from? We don't really supply many goals from our midfielders in terms of we don't have to rely on strikers. But unfortunately, a team like Newcastle United, we have to rely heavily on strikers. They weren't going to come anywhere. And I, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm praying Slomani can you know, come into the team and you know, hit the ground running. Oh, like yeah. the, what's a soccer Dominic come from to lose? First game, noshed into but I hope he just keeps on. Yeah, the thing is I've got with Slaman is I don't want, obviously, all the fans putting in all the pressure on him because I think sometimes that could be a little bit too much for players. And if he doesn't get the... Doesn't, I mean, everyone was on Hoslow's case after he played a couple of games, scored a couple of goals, then he was criticised heavily. You know what Twitter's like? Twitter's a horrible world to live in. And um, that's the thing with Slaman. I just don't want players getting on their backs as well. Just want to quickly come off that. What do you reckon of... Um, more the army. I know he had a poor game on the weekend, but overall, since the new year, mate, he's been fuck me. He's been unreal. I think I, I think I says to you, I can't wait till the day more the army leaves. I think I said to you that at some stage, no. championship player didn't really offer much. Very amiable, like lethargic, and then all of a sudden, boom! I don't know, you know, if he's got a new missus or something like that. Maybe. <laughs> But yeah, mate, he's, he's hit the ground running and he's been tremendous box to box. He's been tremendous, you know, defensively and attackingly. Um, I just think his form's just massively picked up. I don't know whether it's, you know, he's trying to impress in case Newcastle get relegated to stay in the Prem. You know, if he is, carry on doing it, mate, because you're doing a good job. But he's he's come out and he's, you know, he's stood, he's stood tall in games. You know, he's, he cares for the club. You can see it. He's got a great manager. He knows the fans are back in the team. And he's only probably one of four players I can think of now that are actually standing tall and trying to rally the troops. And he's shown that on the on the pitch, which is, which is brilliant. It's tremendous. Yeah, he's guaranteed to start as well. Let's talk about a couple of other players as well. Jamal Sells stood up again this year. Can he get it? Yeah. Do you think... You can get it in the Gareth Southgate squad, or is it, is it too little, too late, or does he not play for a, for a big enough side? No, I think with Gareth Southgate, we've looked at the last few England squad that he's mentioned, and some of them, you know, some of the players that have been called up don't really feature for the for the for their clubs. I think one's the Liverpool fullback. I'm trying to think of his name. Um, Go on, I'm going to test you. <laughs> I, I know who you mean. Joe 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 Gomez. There you go. I thought, I thought you were going to say the other one. No, players like Gomez. Lewis Cook um, was in there as well, Bournemouth player. Yeah, he was in there. Um, so I think with Gareth Southgate, is he's not scared to, you know, call up players that are playing well and not just relying on their reputation. So, you know, Lascelles, um, fantastic English centre-half. You look at our centre-halves now, though, in England, we don't have many... Uh, that are, you know, nailed down. You know, Harry Maguire come in and Harry Maguire's been playing tremendous. Mm -hmm. So for Jamal Lasalle to look at it and think, all right, Gomez was in, Maguire was in, you know, it's a position that I play and that Southgate is testing. You know, he needs to carry on just doing the way he does and hope to get that phone call from uh, Southgate to get on the plane to Russia. Right, if you look at the England centre-backs as well, Cahill can't get a game Chelsea. 
Smalling and Jones, I don't think they're up to much either. Just going to touch upon the loan signs. We've obviously signed three loan players. Do you think Rafa will sign any of them permanently? One, I think the Brav- the Bravka one's interesting one. Yeah, the the keeper he's, he had a really good debut against Man United. I thought he was tremendous against Manchester United. Obviously, he's international, Slovakia number one. Um, hopefully, he can get that in the permanent because you know. Is he better than what we've got? Hundred percent, hundred percent. He's a lot better than Elliot. Elliot, I kind of get away with hands down. Um, I think he's just got loads of mistakes in him. Dollar's young, had a lot of pressure on him, but I think Dollar's stood up tall. He's another one that stood up tall this this season. He's had a good season. He's had right. some sloppy games. Don't get us wrong. He's had some sloppy games. He's had moments where you think mm, maybe you could have done a bit better. But he's had. I think he's had a good season. But yeah, he's a lot better than what we've got. Hopefully, we can get him signed down. As long as he carries on the way he's playing, if I can get him signed down this year, Kennedy um, can play in uh, various positions. Reminds me a bit of James Milner. You know, you can wherever you put him, you'll play really well. Left back, left wing. Um, would, you, would you sign him? Would you sign him then? The end of the season? Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd sign him. I'd sign Kennedy. Whether he wanted not move to the northeast is another thing. Um, Sorry, we, we'll take him to do the big market. Me and you, gonna. <laughs> yeah, we'll take him to their good old idols, but hopefully, hopefully he can come in um, on a permanent. But like I say, it's whether he wants to move to the. Depends who's in his ear, I think, and you know, don't go to Newcastle, stay at Chelsea, you get first team opportunities. You know, he's got um, the Brazil squad coming up as well. Hopefully, he gets in there, but. Well, they'll have a probably change of manager in the summer as well, wouldn't you think? If Conte. So I mean, that if, could... they rid of, if they get rid of Conte, when is this ever going to stop within Chelsea? No, nah, it'll never stop. It's Chelsea, isn't it? With Abramovich. But that is it. We've been talking about um, the game of the weekend, the games coming up and in the summer as well. Let us know what you think in the comments box down there below. Do you agree with what Sean said? Uh, let us know in the comments. See you later. Bye-bye.